The latest version of Windows 10 for phone preview is out. Build 151 is now available to download. We're going to give you a quick tour and show you what it's all about. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Danny Robino here with Windows Central and check it out, we got our Nokia Lumia 635 here and on it is the new build of Windows 10 for phone, we'll just call it Windows 10, that is build 151, it just came out today. Although Microsoft had some hiccups with getting it to users, uh, we managed to squeeze it onto this phone. So it's also available on a lot more Lumias now, so you can head to Windows Central for the full list. Uh, overall though, a much improved uh, you know, rollout this time as far as device compatibility, not necessarily the actual update itself. We're gonna go through now a, a few of the major changes. Now, there are quite a few actually, Performance is a little bit better. It's still very rough. I would not install this on your main phone if that's what you're going to do or are wondering about. Um, I would still get like a 635 or a low-end device and put it on there and play with it. It's just still a little bit rough, but let me show you some improvements here. Um, it's going to be kind of hard to see. It's kind of tiny, but uh, the notification icons now at the top are different. So they're part of the new wireframe uh, type icons that we are familiar with in Windows 10. Some people like that style, some don't, but you can see they're definitely different. Uh, I don't have a SIM in there, which is why that one is there, but for Wi-Fi and notifications and everything, a little bit different. The battery's also a little bit more stubby. Um, bringing down the screen here and you can sort of see the notification center is still the same. You still get your the collapse and the full version, all that, along with your emails. And things definitely look a little bit smoother in that regard. The big changes here, of course, are the new apps. So there's quite a few of them, and we'll just go through them quickly. There's Outlook Mail. There's a new calendar app, and those two are actually linked together, which is kind of interesting. There's a new People Hub, or just People app. There's also a new messaging experience, Project Spartan, of course, new maps and new phone as well. And this right here is just to show you, you can also pin your settings to your start screen, which is kind of interesting. Not the whole settings, I mean individual settings. That's also part of update two in Windows Phone 8.1. So that's kind of a neat feature. So right there, you can see how the background settings uh, pins. And down there, that little tiny guy is Internet Explorer. Now, that's because Spartan is still very Spartan and rough. Uh, so if you don't want to use it or you're having trouble browsing, you can of course go back to the old Internet Explorer, which is you know definitely more polished at this point. All right, so let's head into Outlook Mail here, and you know hopefully I won't show too much of my email stuff in here. Uh, overall, though. You basically have your new layout here. You can see it, it looks pretty nice. I have to admit that the design is pretty sharp. It's very modern looking. You do have a hamburger menu there, and so you can tap that. And you can see the response is a little bit delayed there. Uh, let me zoom out. And you can see the screen brightness is a little overwhelming here for the camera, so you know, forgive me for the changes. But uh, you get your inbox, drafts, sent items, and more. You also have settings down here, the little smiley faces for feedback. And as you can see, there's a calendar button there, so you can hop between the calendar and the email and vice versa. So when you're in calendar, you can hop between email. Uh, up here, you have some icons, including a search, a refresh, plus gives you the new email. And that's basically about it. So. Um, you know, pretty good use of the spacage uh, so far, but um, if you want to swipe stuff, you could do that, of course. I can swipe that way and delete, so that's kind of interesting. And of course, you can flag it the other way, and that's customizable, so when we go back into settings there, uh, you can go into options, and you can see, you can have your different swipe choices right there, so it gives you uh, different abilities. Uh, set flag, clear flag, mark as red, unread, uh, delete, and move and so you can basically go through the menus here are a little bit more polished but also still a little bit rough so uh, and then there's your delete option for swipe left so you can fully customize that diagnostic logging not a whole lot of options yet uh, i don't want to click accounts because it's going to reveal my email address which i prefer not to do right now but um you can add, of course, multiple accounts to this, uh, even in this version, so that's pretty nice. The email is definitely, uh, it's not too bad, actually. Of all the apps so far, it's, it's probably one of the better ones. Uh, let's check out Calendar. So you can see how the calendar loads up there. It's kind of interesting. Um, once again, we get your 
little menu there and so you can have your full calendars to show you which ones you're going to uh, actually display uh, once again settings I'm trying to be careful here because I know some of these reveal my email address I just want to be careful uh, but yeah calendar settings you can head to that and you have Sunday first days a week so these are pretty familiar settings it's just ported over now to the new Outlook app it does feel pretty similar to uh, what is uh, you know, with the Accompli stuff that Microsoft has bought. So it should be pretty familiar. Forgive me if I'm rushing through this stuff. It's just because there's so much to go through. Uh, let's check out people. And so you have uh, your different contact search. What's new? No news to share. Groups. I don't want to show too much of this because obviously um, I don't want to reveal people's personal information. But uh, definitely in line with some of the uh, designs we've seen so far. Messaging is kind of interesting. So this has also been completely overhauled. There isn't a lot here right now. In fact, you can see there's little like alpha and beta symbols in the corner, which goes to tell you how rough this stuff really is. Um, if I hit one of these messages. You can see it, and yeah, I don't want to reveal too much there, but here we go. If I can, this is a test message I was trying to send a while ago. So you can see the different bubbles here now with the try again, and there's that new send button, which is kind of interesting. The new icons and the layout, which is sort of off center. Some people like it, some people don't, but it's got the same wireframe design. If mute conversation, delete, select messages, switch number, block contact, and provide feedback, uh, all pretty standard stuff. Do that brings up the new keyboard, of course, with the little cursor uh, thing, so we can move it around the screen, which is kind of nice. Other than that, though, pretty familiar stuff. You also have the microphone, so you can, of course, dictate uh, stuff in there. Uh, no ability to switch to Skype yet, so uh, that's going to be eventually merged into this. So you have Skype messaging built in, you'll be able to switch between the two. Uh, it's not here right now, but uh, hopefully, it'll come soon. And here's your main settings as well. Go in there, you have your text message backup. This is actually a pretty familiar screen, I think, from uh, what's already on messaging in Windows. Scrolling down further, let's check out Project Spartan. Now, Spartan's pretty interesting. It's uh, it's definitely a rough browser right now. If you're wondering why they didn't release it earlier, once you start using it, you'll kind of get it. Now, they do have the address bar at the top, and some people are very upset about that. Microsoft is actually encouraging you to give them feedback about that. They are reconsidering moving it down to the bottom, uh, but they're going to experiment with some design choices and what they can do. But you know, if you feel strongly about that, that's the reason why this is a feedback program. Uh, just make sure you tell them. Uh, you can see there's different, some of these are actually, those menus are actually part of uh, MSN here. It's a little tricky to get out of there. And so here is the main browser. The performance is okay. It actually crashes when you go to Windows Central. So um, the compatibility issues are still not 100% sorted out. You do have tabs, uh, hub, oop, and I hit a button wrong right there. Tabs, Hub, and Share, Add to Favorites, Add to Reading List, Find on Page. We can check out settings here. Default uh, View Style for Reading, Light, Medium, Dark. So these are actually already in Windows Phone 8.1, but Reading Style is kind of nice for reading articles. It takes out all the uh, formatting of images and the HTML stuff and just gives you text. Uh, reading View Font Size. You can see all the different things here, services predict the next page and speed up browsing. So some of these are actually on desktop browsers today where it looks ahead and downloads the stuff in anticipation. It helps the experience. So while you're reading the page, it's actually doing some work back there, but you can turn that on and off, which is pretty nice. Uh, malicious sites protection. There's your do not track request, which is off by default. So if you're into privacy and everything, you, you're going to want to turn that on. That's a new thing. They, they used to have it on by default, but they've changed their mind on that due to uh, some requests and see if we can is that coming back out there. You can see the responsiveness on this sometimes. There it goes. It's going to be a little bit slow. So you just want to be careful. Um, let's see, you tap on a link there. You can see it loading everything. It, it, I mean, it's a decent browser. What you're getting the impression here is a lot of stuff has a ton of potential, but it's not, you know, a fully, uh, completely polished yet. If you hit the little book up there, if you see that, that's going to be reading mode. And I haven't even tried that yet. Let's see how that works. And so now you can see you cut out all of the, um, you know, formatting stuff and just gives you the raw text, which is kind of nice. Other than that, though, there's not too much to it. It's a pretty basic browser, but uh, once again, a lot of potential there. And it's going back down. Uh, maps, and I gotta be careful here, I don't wanna necessarily show where I live. Maps is pretty interesting. It's got a lot of stuff built into it, for instance, driving. So what we now know as here, 
drive and maps are all going to be put into um, this one app and so you can scroll around here you have your different your 3d views which is kind of interesting takes you home you have your different layers aerial and traffic which works pretty well see in here in the settings so if you put in an address you can search for something you can of course get driving directions built into it uh, download it. here's your offline mapping stuff here's your driving directions maps background automatic uh, so that'll switch to day or night mode which is kind of nice speed limit warning and you can even configure how much you want that uh, automatic zoom search privacy and all your settings there are pretty good so overall um, you know it's a different feel but it's getting there uh, definitely nice to see new mapping though with built-in driving stuff uh, let's check out the phone now this has definitely been changed as well you can see again my sim error and you can see the formatting issues that they have with their fonts aren't quite lined up in uh, appropriate size I will say for people who are complaining a lot about the font size in the previous build should be happier a lot of the stuff is bigger now for instance check out the dial pad so dial pad is definitely a, a lot more usable if you remember in a previous build it was probably about that big very tiny numbers, hard to use, but you can see now it's, it's getting a little bit more polished. Uh, you can do speed dials, I don't have any there, and then of course history, and so you can, that would probably call them back, since I don't have a sim in there. Tapping that button brings up the contacts info, and since it's just a movie theater, I don't mind giving this out. Um, you can see this is a little bit rough. The first time I ran this, it actually asked me what I thought about the font color, did I, or the sorry, the contact color. If I wanted this to match the accent to the phone, or wanted something different, and it gave me a choice, yes, no, and I could actually tell them what I wanted. Uh, right now, obviously, it matches the contacts, but they're experimenting with different ways. Um, not much there for um, images or anything else it's pretty barren down here you can see I have an edit link and pin button once again new style icons the wireframe types offset a little bit different design share contact delete and provide feedback so make sure you use those provide feedback buttons it's very important you make your voice heard I love comments on our site, but it's even better if you give these guys, you know, your comments. And let's see what's down here. You got search, your phone book, voicemail, select calls, block calls, and settings. And so here's your new settings menu. Basically the same stuff we're already familiar with in Windows Phone. And that is pretty much it. Uh, if I go into background here to change the background, you'll see now the settings of uh, Black. So if you remember the very first version of uh, Windows 10 for phone had all the settings were white and it was kind of uh, jarring. You can see they're finally catching up now and they're matching it with uh, the system. And uh, let's see if I can go back. Yeah, so once you go back to the menus here, you can start to see. Uh, another thing, once again, I was telling you about how everything is bigger. You can see everything now fits the screen a little bit more, looks a little bit more natural. And actually, it looks kind of sharp. Now, it's a very rough build, and I think they you know, definitely have a lot of work to do. And I don't think they have any uh, mis you know, understandings about that. But you can sort of see where this is heading. And I kind of actually like what I see, but we we'll definitely have to wait a few more months before this gets more polished. But I kind of like the design of this stuff. I think it looks great. Of course, you may have a different opinion and you know, you can let us know what you think. More importantly, let Microsoft know what you think. But there you go, head to Windows Central for more information and tell us what you think of this and whether or not you're gonna put it on your phone. Like I said, I'd go out and pick out a little burner phone, like a 635 or something else like a 530 and maybe give it a shot there. But there you go. Take care, everybody.